Drugs which kill or slow down the growth of bacteria are called antibiotics. Now, antibiotics can be divided into two classes, namely bactericidal and bacteriostatic. Now, the bactericidal drugs are those which kill bacteria, while the bacteriostatic drugs inhibit their growth. In 1928, a Scottish researcher named Alexander Fleming observed that the growth of a staphylococci culture was hampered due to contamination by penicillium, a genus of fungi. Now, in figure 1, we can see a pure culture of staphylococci without any disturbance. But in figure 2, we can see that penicillium contamination has caused disturbance around the nearby area. Before we can proceed any further, we must know about the bacterial cell wall. Now the bacterial cell wall is made up of peptidoglycans, which is essentially a mixture of glycans and peptides. Now in this figure, we can see the tube-like structures, these are called the glycans. While there are some rope-like structures or chain-like structures, these are called peptides. Now here's a more zoomed in version of this figure and in this zoomed version we can also see in between the ropes there are some cross linking. Now the cross linkings act as knots which put together the peptides. Now without this cross linking or making of knots the peptidoglycan structure will be more susceptible to injurious factors. Now in the previous section, we have seen the importance of cross-linking between the peptides. Now the cross-linking puts the peptidoglycan structure together to make a stronger cell wall. Without this structure, cell wall will be more vulnerable to injurious factors. Now a bacterial enzyme named transpeptidase helps in this process of cross-linking. Without this enzyme, cross-linking cannot occur. Our antibiotic penicillin blocks the activity of transpeptidase and thus cross-linking is not produced and bacteria is more vulnerable to injurious factors. Some of the bacteria have got a special extra chromosomal DNA known as plasmid and some of these plasmids have the gene to produce an enzyme named beta-lactamase. Now the beta-lactamase enzyme from these bacteria can break the beta-lactam ring of penicillin structure. Here we see the structure of penicillin and it contains a specific ring called beta-lactam ring. Thus the destruction of beta-lactam ring results in the destruction of penicillin and which cannot work against the bacteria. Now these type of bacteria are known as penicillin resistant bacteria and this phenomenon is known as penicillin resistance. Bacteria have some method of sharing their genetic information. Let's say a resistant bacteria shares its plasmid with a non-resistant bacteria. Here we can see a conjugation tube through which the plasmid from resistant bacteria will be copied to a non-resistant bacteria, thus making the non-resistant bacteria resistant. Now this non-resistant bacteria will gain the ability to destroy penicillin. In other words, the newly formed resistant bacteria and all of its offsprings will become virtually resistant.